the 12th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One pride, baby! Yeah! Well, that was their number one need to me was finding a wide receiver. That room was barren there. They decided to go up front and get physical on the offense and defensive lines, but not a surprise to see them get to Amon Ross St. Brown, who's absolutely a perfect slot, very physical, very tough. He does a lot of dirty work there for the Trojans. And I would also say keeping that theme alive, that's their third Pac-12 player, Brad Holmes, their general manager. He's been obviously coming from the Rams, knows those players very well. Once again. Thank you. I will do two more, starting with Ben Raven. Hey, welcome to the NFL. Uh, caught the video you uh, working out in the garage last night. I was wondering if that was uh, like a tip from your brother since he was a six-round pick a couple years ago, or is that just your mentality, staying focused in that moment? Uh, it's de definitely just my mentality growing up. Um, you know, like I said, I'm competitive. I'm a dog. Um, and, you know, last night I had a bittersweet feeling in my mouth. Um, and all it just made me realize is I got to go harder. So. You know, I'm glad that the Detroit Lions, you know, drafted me. But this is just a starting point for me. Um, this just, you know, it's the beginning of a chapter for me. And, I, you know, I'm going to go in, work hard, and give them everything I got. Did you have that uh, machine out, ready to go? Or did you say, let's get this out here? I got to get some work in. Uh, we're actually moving. So, you know, it was kind of bad bad timing for us uh, moving on, on the draft day or draft weekend. So we were actually moving everything into a different spot, and we had the jug machine. We're moving that, too. So we just, you know, set it up and, and started working. All right. We'll go last question. Carl Mikey. <laughs> hey, welcome to uh, welcome to Detroit. Um, you're an L.A. guy. I'm, I'm just curious if you have any relationship with Jared Goff or if you've ever met him or what you know about him. Um, you know, uh, he actually, I think he trains out here in – and he trained out here on, in Golden West College with, you know, one of the quarterback coaches. And I, I don't think I've ever thrown with him. I, I've seen him. I've seen him a few times. Never thrown him. Never met him. But definitely, you know, I think I've, you know, I think he's a great quarterback. And I'm excited to work with him. Fair enough. Um, just my uh, one quick follow up for you. Um, you were eighth in the country last year in contested catches. You, you've talked a little bit about it, but I'm just curious when it comes to making contested catches, which is something that you're known for, is it just a strength thing or is there something more that goes into being, you know, to having a knack for making those grabs? Uh, I think it's, it's a lot of things, you know, it's definitely, you know, being strong at, at the point of the catch is huge. I think being able to track the ball is another thing. Um, you know, usually contested catches are deeper balls. Um, so, you know, being able to track the ball and know when to attack is huge. And then having that mentality, that that just that that dog where you're going to win no matter who's there, you're making that 50 50 ball. So that's it. That's just what goes into when I'm when I'm out there. Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Amin Ra. Thank you. With the 113th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Derek Barnes, linebacker from Purdue. Go Lions! That's an intriguing player who made the switch from outside to playing off the ball as an inside linebacker. And somebody has really long arms and he uses them to, to really stack blocks, meaning he shoots his hands and keeps uh, opponents off of his chest so he can get downhill and make tackles. I'd be curious to see if they are going to stack him off the ball, as you see right here, or are they going to let him rush the quarterback off the edge? You see the, the range and the speed. It's legit. He's, he's a legit 4-5 guy with his speed coming uh, both in range and off the edge here. He's a little bit tight with his hips, but when he gets going in a straight line, he gets there in a hurry. He's got tremendous range, plays with great effort to pursue. And here's some of the pass rush. The power, that speed, the power, you get a bull rush, put the tackle right on his back and finish. 
He's got those just strong, heavy hands. In other words, he gets his hands on you, Charles. You see bodies move. Yeah, I love when, they, when you use that term because those heavy hands are used to do what you want to do. Looking back at, at your career at, at Purdue, you know, you played outside, you rushed the passer, but you also moved kind of more inside off the ball later in your career. How much does that versatility, you think, help you transition to the NFL with your ability to kind of play anywhere? Um, I would just say that um, just me personally as a player, um, I love to be on the field. Uh, I love to contribute to the team. I love to do what the coach asks me to do. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're a football player. So you know, being versatile, versatile is, you know, huge in the NFL. And I'm glad I can bring that to the table. Playing defense, defense end was awesome. Playing linebacker was awesome. Uh, I'm just ready, you know, take take it to the NFL and, you know, do whatever the coach asks me to do. Just just ready to get to work and, uh, you know, come to Detroit and do, and, and do what I've been doing uh, so far and even better. So I'm excited about that. And then just a quick follow-up, what do you think your strength is heading into the next level? Um, I would just say uh, just just excited to, to learn. Um, I think that, you know, my best football is best football is ahead of me. Um, I'm excited to come in there and learn as a rookie, uh, you know, contribute to special teams, um, work my tail off to, you know, hopefully, you know, be able to play. But at the end of the day, just coming there and working, uh, coming there and be able to contribute to the team, do what coaches want me to do, learn from the older guys, uh, you know, just, I'm just ready to go. I'm blessed, beyond blessed. Congratulations and welcome. Yes, sir, appreciate that. Kyle Mankey. Hey, Derek, welcome to the D. Um, I, I'm just curious what sort of uh, interactions you had with the Lions during this draft process, uh, Dan Campbell and their staff, and uh, yeah, what, what kind of interactions did you have? Yeah, so I talked to uh, Mark, Coach Mark uh, DeLeon, of course. Um, talked to a lot of them guys down there at the Senior Bowl. Um, you know, just I, I knew because, uh, you know, my coach back at Purdue would text me like, you know, the Lions love you. Uh, you know, the Lions, you know, look highly of you. And, you know, it all shows. I'm just really blessed to, you know, to, to be a lion. Uh, you know, that's my favorite animal. I have a tattoo across my chest <laughs> and it's, it's meant to be. So, you know, I'm ready to go. And, you know, I appreciate the coaching staff, everything for believing in me. Um, it's, it's, it was a long, long, long two days, but it all paid off and I'm ready to get to work. So. What's what's the story on the lion's tattoo? Oh, um, my favorite animal. I think uh, lions. The lion is you know the the king of the jungle. Uh, heart of a lion. That's what I say. I have you know loyalty, um, just power and just you know just leadership. Um, I think that's all the traits that I grew up having. So you know, I always always been been a been a fan of a lion. So <laughs> the the tattoos on your chest. Is that right? And yes. How, big is, it? how big is it? It's huge. It covers my whole whole right pec. Yeah, right on. Uh, just, just one more question from me, uh, Derek. Um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, day three picks, they got to contribute on special teams uh, right away. I, I'm just curious your experience on, on special teams. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I contribute a lot of special teams my, um, you know, freshman and sophomore year at Purdue. Uh, freshman year, that was what I was known for as a special teams guy. The, the guy, who, you know, is going to be on the field and go, go make a play um, and, you know, do the right things, um, be coachable. I played almost every special teams from punt return to punt to kick off return to kick off. Um, I played, um, you know, PAT block. I did a lot, you know, in sophomore year, I did the same thing. And it's just like, I, I know it and I'm, I'm ready to come in there and contribute any way I can. Um, and I'm always, I'm going to, you know, give 100%, 110% anything I do. So I'm just ready to, ready to come play football. Cool. Thank you. Yes, sir. Justin Rogers. Derek, welcome to Detroit. I'm uh, I'm not going to ask you to show us your chest. Seems a little awkward for a first first Zoom, but may maybe like the second or third, we get get a look at this thing. A um, sure. little little bit of an overlap, I guess, to an earlier question. But linebackers, like receivers, they come in all shapes and sizes and and styles. When when you're asked to kind of describe your game, your strengths, your weaknesses, how do you describe your playing style? Um, just going back to being a versatile player, um, you know. I think that playing DN and linebacker helped me a lot. Um, I would say from a standpoint of, you know, you now you now I know what it feels like to play DN, defensive end and not defensive line. Now I know what it would feel like to play linebacker. So that kind of helps my game out because I can know, you know, as a Mike, Mike linebacker, you kind of compete people, put the people where they need to be, you know, make adjustments, uh, be a leader on the defense, be the quarterback of the defense. And that just helped me because I understand the mindset of what it is to be a D lineman and a linebacker. And I think that just elevated my game uh, throughout this, this 2020 season. So. And, and tell me a little bit about your coverage skills. Cause that's kind of the, the third part of, of being a linebacker, um, particularly in the NFL guys are getting faster. They're utilized in the middle of the field. Where are you at in, in the development of your coverage skills? 
of development, always willing to learn, always willing to take on new technique and new task. Um, I think that I'm, I could be great in coverage. Uh, you know, I, I think I have the athleticism and speed to do it. I'm excited, excited to take on that challenge. Didn't do it much at Purdue, but uh, you know, always willing to learn. You know, uh, I showed some flashes of, of being able to coverage, to cover um, in college, and you know, in the NFL, you know, it's a lot more advanced, and I'm just ready to take on that challenge and just give it all I got, work on my technique day in day out, and you know, like I said, learn from older guys and you know, take advice. Uh, you can't be can't be great if you're not willing to listen and and, and learn. So, thanks, Derek. Congratulations sure. once again. I appreciate that. So one more question, Carlos. Yeah, hey Derek, uh, you had a lot of uh, sacks as a junior, and then uh, I don't think you had any sacks last year. Uh, yes, did he use you differently, or or what was the reason for that dip? Um, uh, the change or just the the sacks? The sacks. Why did they? Why did you not have any last year? Um, I would just say, uh, you know, playing defense and um, when I was strictly playing defense and outside linebacker, it was more so of. I'm getting repetition, and I don't know, and I don't really make no excuses for myself. I think that I had plenty of opportunities my senior year to get sacks, um, just didn't happen. Um, but you know, they didn't use use me as defense end in the practice, so it was just like a game plan thing, like a game thing, uh, depending on you know the down the distance, um, you know. But you know, didn't, didn't wouldn't say I lost my technique, but just the repetition was huge for me. Didn't get that much, you know, my senior year, but no, I'm willing to get back to it, you know, if I have to. Uh, if I have to come off the edge and, and, you know, and play inside linebacker, I want to do both of those. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'm going to do my best to, you know, excel at both positions and excel at what, you know, the Lions want me to do. And I'm so excited to, to be a part of Detroit Lions. And just the other thing is, um, you know, a lot of guys opted out, you know, you had a really good junior season. Uh, did you consider opting out last year? Um, I didn't, um, I didn't at all uh, just because, you know, for me, if you love the game, uh, it's not always about, you know, uh, where, you, where you're going to be next year. It's just in the moment. Um, it's not always about money. Not like that. I just like the game of football. I love to play. And I was a leader, uh, a captain. What, what, what would a, why would a captain, you know, sit out and, and leave, their, leave his brothers behind? I'm just, you know, above that. Um, that that's just not me. Um, I, I knew that my senior season was going to be important for me also. Uh, that took a big consideration in that too, but you know, I just want to be able to play my last season with, you know, the guys who helped me get to where I am now. I have to show them nothing but love and, you know, and appreciation. And the coaches also, um, I didn't want to let nobody down. So and I didn't want to let myself down. So I did. I never thought about opting out at all. Uh, just the last thing I wanted to ask was um, Cliff Averill was a great player here for the Lions for a while. Um, have you ever met him? Have you ever touched base with him? Has he ever shared any of experiences in the NFL with you? Uh, no, sir, not that I know of. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? The name? I'm trying Cliff to. Cliff Averill. Oh no! Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't had any connection with him, but definitely talk to uh, David. David Blau. David Blau. Yeah. <laughs> talk to Cliff. He's a good dude. Yes, sir. I will. All right, Derek. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Congrats, Derek. Thank, thank you. Thank the Detroit Lions select Derek Barnes. Linebacker from Purdue. Did you see the, the range and the speed. It's legit. I'm just ready, you know, take take it to the NFL and you know do whatever coach asks me to do. Just, just ready to get to work. Contribute any way I can. I'm gonna, you know, give 110 in anything I do. So I'm just ready to, ready to come play football. Meanwhile, obviously this uh, this is a pretty uh, exciting moment for us, and uh, you know, I'm, certainly Brad wanted to be here with with me um, to introduce Panay, but um, he's obviously still getting ready for the draft. You know, we have another day to to add to this roster and. Uh, you know, I would say this: Brad, Brad is doing a phenomenal job, and uh, we're we are uh, we are getting players that embody everything we're about, and uh, and it really starts with this big man here. You know, we uh, identified him early in the process, uh, and ultimately, Brad and I wanted to 
you know, we wanted to walk the talk and, and we said what kind of players we were looking for and what we wanted to build uh, this team around, what we were looking for uh, from a cult cultural standpoint. And uh, this young man meets all of that criteria. And uh, it's not every day you can find an athlete that is his size and has his temperament all right, this is a tough dude that knows how to play nasty and, and he can protect the quarterback. And uh, that's what you're looking for when you're trying to build a foundation on the old line. He's going to fit like a glove. I said it before with those guys that are up there right now that we already have in the building. He'll go hand in hand with them and uh, he'll adapt quickly. Um, had a chance to meet his family, uh, Gabe and Arlene are here, and we welcome them to the family and uh, outstanding people. And, and uh, I told Gabe this last night. Um, that it's easy to watch the tape and do your homework on this guy, but when you really start digging around and doing research on what kind of guy you're getting, what kind of character you're getting, I mean, to a man, it, it's everything is about how this guy's been raised and the job that his parents have done and how, how big that his family is involved in everything that, that he is and what he's about and uh, speaks volumes. I, I'm telling you, the... The last selling point for us, we Zoomed this young man on Tuesday, and, and it was outstanding. And it was all we needed, and it was perfect, and we knew this guy was the fit. That was, he was everything that, that we're about. So um, there's so many other relationships here. I mean, obviously, Hank Fraley, our O-line coach, recruited, he's recruited him, you know, coming out of high school. So already a history there. Um, but we're excited to have this guy. And... So last thing I would say, all right, to you, I'm done massaging your shoulders, all right? So now it's go time. So without further ado, man, here's our big man, Pene Sewell. All right, brother. Let's go get him. Yep. Let's go get him. What up, what up, what up? I'm a lion. I just want to say thank you to Sheila and the Ford family, Brad, Coach Campbell, and everybody part of this organization, man, to, to believing in me and to pick me and my family here, man, it's a dream come true, and I'm ready, man, to see the, uh, their reaction when they picked me, it, it drives me even more. It creates a motivation that uh, it's already there and just increases it a lot more, and I'm ready. I'm excited. I can't wait to put the helmet on, the pads on, and run through somebody. So uh, I'm ready and excited. So any questions, I'm ready. All right, Tim Twentyman, DetroitLions.com. Hey, Penny, welcome to Detroit. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> you know, flying here last night and, and going through the process, I, I'm just curious, have you had a moment to reflect at all at, at just how far you've come from, you know, playing football on the beach in the American Samoa to, you know, flying here and being a top 10 pick and going through this and now standing here? Have you had that moment to reflect and, and, and just what does it mean to you? Yeah, uh, last night to be specific, to be specific, I was done eating dinner with all the coaches and uh, getting to know people, and I was in my bed last night just again reminiscing about where I came from and how far it took and what the journey was like on the way here. And looking back, man, I got emotional just because uh, if I told that kid uh, in that moment where he was on the island that he would be here, I wouldn't believe it. Uh, and to see where I'm at today, it's again, a motivation to me and a testament to mom and dad and shout out to everything that they did and sacrificed for me too. And uh, yeah, so looking at that kid, it just makes me go harder and uh, it's unbelievable that I'm here and uh, I'm gonna keep going. Corey Woods, Woodward Sports. Hey, today, welcome to Detroit again. Um, yesterday on the morning, we were show, T.J. Lang, former Lions player and Super Bowl champion, called you a generational talent and the type of player that makes him want to get back in shape and play alongside. How does it feel to hear a former Pro Bowler speak on you in that fashion? Man, it's good. But again, at the end of the day, I haven't played a snap, and uh, I have a lot to prove in this league. So there's a lot of work to be done. And uh uh, talk like that again is appreciative, but it has to go one, in the one year and out the other. Uh, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to prove everything that I need to prove to everyone, and uh, just just excited to get on that field with the players. Welcome to Detroit again. And just so you know, you came in the press conference saying what up. You got to finish. 
Gucci, but what up, though? That's how we do it in Detroit. What up, though? Okay, I like it. All right. I remember that one. John Macaroon, SI. Bene, good morning. It's great to have you in our great city. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I got a couple for you. The first one, you said that uh, in childhood you played Madden and you picked the Lions because they were underdogs and you played your brothers. Were you able to win against them when you used the Lions? Yeah, I did. Uh, I had my fair share of wins. Obviously, Madden has its uh, times where it's glitching and uh, does some plays where it's just not in my favor. But, yeah, I beat them a couple times. All I had to do was throw it up to Megatron and then also uh, run the ball with Javid Best. So. Absolutely. My second one is, you touched on it just now briefly, if we fast forward 10, 15 years and you look back on your career, what would you want to have accomplished in your time in the National Football League? Uh, shoot. I just want to accomplish whatever there is to accomplish in this game, and that's just getting better each and every day, focusing on the present, and uh, don't really have anything like accolades set, just kind of taking a day at a time, getting better each and every day and going it by that. Appreciate you. Best of luck. Thank you. Go to Eric Willard, ESPN. Hey, what's up, Panay? <clears throat> what's up? Obviously, you said, you know, you, you came in, you, you got a chance to meet a lot of different coaches and things like that. Just has your perception of the organization changed at all just from being inside of it? Like, what is the vibe of it now that you got a chance to be around everything's face-to-face? -face? Has, that, has that changed your perception to just this franchise at all? Man, when I came in, I didn't. I thought, the NFL was all the same, and it's a business aspect, but, man, I was totally wrong. I came in, family atmosphere, everybody opening with open arms and really greeting me with all love. And it kind of took me uh, in shock for a little bit. And I was like, okay, so this is this is something that I really would love to be a part of, and this is something that I dream to be a part of. And to have people in the room like that, man, it just makes me want to go harder. It makes me want to give them all and sacrifice everything for them. You talked about, you know, obviously pe people speaking high and that going in one ear and out the other. Does that add any any additional pressure at all, though, when people speak of you that highly? Or is you you already just got the motivation within yourself? How does that, you know, just your, your outlook going into this year? Yeah, just like you said, the motivation comes with, from within. I love this game. This game has offered me things that I, I couldn't imagine. And, uh, yeah, so just waking up every day, looking in the man in the mirror that I am and seeing what things I can do to improve on that day. There's a, a lot of hours in the day, and there's a lot of things to do. So just going about it like that, staying in the present, don't get outside of myself and to go from there. Kyle Meinke, M Live. Hey, Benet, welcome, welcome to Detroit. Um, Thank you. Uh, Dan had mentioned, uh, you know, when he introduced you, um, that you guys had a Zoom call on Tuesday, and that kind of clinched the deal uh, for Detroit if you were going to be there. What are your recollections uh, from, from that conversation? Uh, man, that conversation was nothing about anything but trying to find the person I am, uh, f find out the person that I am. Uh, it was real, real genuine talk, uh, nothing about football, just trying to see the character and how I approach things and how I approach the game of football and so on and so forth. So the conversation was really genuine and, uh, you yeah. They obviously loved you coming out of that conversation. What were your impressions of Detroit, of, of Dan and Brad, uh, if anything? Man, I loved it. The energy that they bring, Coach Campbell's and uh, his philosophy uh, matches well hand in hand with mine. And I can't wait to step on that field and match that same energy he brings out every day. And uh, to also give Brad that same energy he had when he picked me. And he uh, answered that phone and uh, picked my name and called me. So I just can't wait to really, again, share the moment with them on the practice field, game field, whatever it is. Just one more for me real quick. Uh, I, I know you mentioned that, you know, coming from the island to here, that all kind of set in for you. But I, I, I'm just kind of curious, more big picture, Pinay, like, like has, it, has this whole, like, what's this week been like for you the past couple of days, hearing your name called at the draft party, flying across the country, meeting a lot of folks, uh, you know, uh, being a top 10 pick, uh, getting here. I mean, just has it set in, um, you know, what, what has this week been like for you, just you and your family uh, with this experience? Yeah, man, uh, to really summarize summarize it all up, it's a dream come true. I'm literally living my dream. I'm walking in the dream right now. And it's crazy because one time my mom, we was at dinner last night, and she, she told one of the coaches or L in here, it was like, pinch me. Like, <laughs> like, it's really not that. It's crazy. 
uh, to see where we're at and to walk the path that we're walking right now, man, it's unbelievable. And I'm soaking it all up every second. I'm not wasting a, a, a thing here. I'm trying to see everything. I'm trying to meet everyone. I just really want to be a sponge and soak it all in because, again, you only live this life once, so I'm going to make it count. And to be a part of this organization, man, it's nothing but a dream come true. And I can't wait to see what happens in the, in the days that uh, in the future. And, uh, again, nothing but excitement from me and my family and uh, looking forward to it. Justin Rogers, Detroit News. But hey, good to good to see you again. Um, Thank you. I, I'm, I'm curious which, if if any, teammates have have reached out to you in these these first couple couple days. New teammates here in, in Detroit. Uh, a bunch of them. So I had uh, Jared hit me up, Taylor, Vi, uh, and a couple of the old linemen, uh, Frank. So uh, all of them came in one by one. I've tried to hit them back, uh, but I'm here at the office meeting all the coaches. So right after this meeting, I'll probably call each and every one of them that hit me up. So, And, and Coach Campbell mentioned that you were recruited by Hank Fraley in college. You, you had a lot of lot of suitors coming out of high school. I'm just curious, do you do you remember uh, Hank at all through that process? Yeah, without a doubt, because he was one of the very few coaches who actually came out to St. George, Utah and watched a high school game. And I remember the game that I was playing in. It was against Pineview uh, at, at Pineview. So uh, to see him there meant – meant something and I knew he was different because he was he was one of the few that only did that and uh, he only stayed till halftime but and but we had a conversation before that and uh, yeah and then uh, I mean you were you were coached by by coach Cristobal at Oregon you know that's a guy that, that played offensive line and could share tricks of the trade obviously Hank 10-year NFL veteran what is what is the value of, of having a guy that played your position at a high level as, as a teacher for you it means a lot because it just kind of gives me that confidence in what the teacher is doing and what he's teaching to me and knowing somebody that's done it before me and seen it and what it looks like and what a rep looks like and how it's supposed to go. It just means a lot and it, me it makes it a lot easier for me to do. I'm not second questioning anybody because, again, they've been in the position uh, that they've seen players play at the highest level and to go from there. So just learning from them has been nothing but a blessing to me. Thanks, Benet. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Dave Burkett, Detroit Free Press. Hey, welcome to town again, Benet. Uh, did Elton pinch your mom? I mean, it's real, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, which is still crazy. Uh, I can't, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to follow up on what Justin asked because I'd heard, you know, Jared Goff was one of the people that I'd reached out to. So did you get back to him? What did he say? What was that conversation, if there was anything? Uh, it was a text. It was just saying good luck and can't wait to work. And, uh, yeah, just simply replied back that I'm ready to take the load and uh, really work with him. And then um, can you just explain sort of what comes up next for you? I mean, I guess rookie minicamps, you know, a week and a half away or whatever it is. So how do you sort of spend your time getting ready to, to come back here? What, what do you do between now and then? Yeah, between now and then is it's still grind mode. Um, either going to Cali or getting with the – an online dude to help me get prepared for rookie minute camp and get me in shape so that I'm ready to come in and just keep running and uh, not slowing down for anything or anyone and just to put my head down to work. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Got time for two more. Tony Paul, Detroit News. Hey, welcome to Detroit. Um, I, just, I just was curious, um, can you share kind of your first memories of playing football uh, on the island? So, yeah, uh, one of my first memories, man, it was the, when the Little League just started up there, and I was about 10 years old. And the league had some – it went up to the age of 13, I believe, or 14. And there were some big 13 and 14-year-olds on the island back then, and they weren't uh, too friendly. So I remember practice going against all them big boys. <laughs> it wasn't really fun. Uh, kind of didn't like the sport for a minute just because I was getting picked on by all of them. But, yeah, so uh, I was really small getting picked on uh, at the time. So that's my first memory. <laughs> all right, just one other quick one. Um, yeah, well, growing up, do you, can, do you comprehend or, or even think about the, the humble situation you have, or did it kind of come when you moved here and you look back on it? 
did you kind of know at the time or do you kind of look back on that to realize how humble your, your family living situation was? Man, I always look back on it and I, it's always a reminder. Uh, so my dad has uh, given us all, my siblings and I, a gift and it was a watch. It was all a watch and the case inside had a picture of our home saying, uh, in this life, what was saying ultimately in, in this life that we have this time and time shared with family is the most important. And uh, that right there, I remember when he gave it to me, I was a little emotional. And I looked at that image and that watch every single day. And uh, that reminds me of where I came from. That reminds me of why I do this. That reminds me of everything that it took to get here. And uh, that helps me. Uh, motivate myself each and every day, gets me out of bed to look at mom and to, and dad in the eyes and to see where we were. Man, again, it's a different motivation and uh, I'm ready to go out there and show. Um, and just when did he, when did he give you guys that watch? It was Christmas. Yeah. Christmas uh, when all of our family members are uh, together for, I guess the little time or a few times a year, just because everybody's so busy with, what they got going on. Thank you very much. All right, we've got time for one more question. Mike O'Hara, DetroitLions.com. Uh, nice meeting you too, Penny. I just wonder just a couple of things real quick. We always talk about the sort of how tight the offensive line is. How much does it say to you about the brotherhood that the guys have already reached out to talk to you already and welcome you to Detroit and welcome you to the Detroit Lions? Man, that means a lot and that's love. And uh, to see the organization like that and to have the room all tie and really caring about each other makes the process a lot more easier and it makes it much more meaningful when you cross that line and really in the ba in the field of play with them and the relationship and that chemistry that you guys build with each other just makes it easier and everybody just kind of flowing as one and uh, makes the game a lot uh, a lot better for the man across and the man next to you and just one other thing, how hard, how, how much did you miss football last year? I mean, the whole experience, the practice, the locker room, the guys, the whole, the whole, the whole ball of wax. Man, it was hard to sit there and to watch everybody else play. And also when the Pac-12 came back to see my old teammates play, it was, it was tough. And the, it was a decision that I really had to take to the chin and really just kind of put, keep it pushing. And when I was watching everybody, I wrote down in my notes, that the next time I get to step in the field of play, that I'm going to make the most of it. And that everybody will feel my passion and my heart the next time I step in between those lines. Because, man, it was hard to see, especially little bro out there, and for me to not really go out there and uh, share that moment with him. It was, um, it was difficult. So... I wrote down in my notes that man, I'm seeing out. I'm seeing out for a reason. I'm coming out with the purpose, and uh, I'm gonna make the most of it the next time I get my chance. All right, thanks a lot, and once again, welcome to Detroit. Thank you. All right, thanks, Panay. Thanks, everybody. Yes, sir. We in the thanks, D. Two hundred and fifty-seventh pick in the twenty twenty-one NFL Draft. The Detroit Lions select. Jamar Jefferson, running back, Oregon State. Welcome to the Pride, Jamar. What is it like? I mean, sitting there, waiting until the very last pick, and then and uh, and, and to hear your name called um, as opposed to you know fielding different calls as an undrafted free agent. Uh, it's a little stressful just to be uh, just you know sitting down with your family, being patient, being patient, and you know waiting for a phone call. But it's off. It's also uh, you know one a, a great opportunity uh, and. and uh, a very open opportunity. So it's also a blessing too. So, but it's, you know, it's kind of stressful also, but um, I'm just glad I got picked. Um, I'm just glad I got picked and, you know, for my family and uh, got to be a Detroit Lion. And we don't get a whole lot of Oregon State football games over the air out here. Um, so just, just for our benefit, you know, describe your, your running style and then, um, you know, the fact that you had such a, I guess, a big rebound year from from 2019 to 2020. What was the the biggest difference there? Um, I feel like um, I'm more of a balanced bat. I feel like I can, you know, I can get fourth and one. I can get the first down if, it, if my name is called or 
when it's when when it's like when I'm when we backed up on the ten, I can take it ninety or take it a hundred. So I feel like um, I'm more of a back. I can do both. So, you know, I I got big and I can catch the ball out of the backfield. So uh, I feel like I can do it all. So I consider myself a balanced back. Congratulations, Jamar. Tim Twentyman. Hey, Jamar, uh, congratulations. Can you just speak to, to joining a backfield that, that features guys like DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams, a guy who's been in the league a long time? What do you think you can come in and, and learn from guys like that? Uh, you know, those guys are already experienced. I'm just you know, hoping to come in and help my team with it can be special teams or, uh, you know, any position they want me at. I'm I'm, I'm a, I'm a play, you know, I'm come in, ask questions and learn from the veterans. And just a quick follow up. You mentioned special teams. Or do you have any kick return or, or punt return in, in your history? Uh, this past year, I had uh, two kickoff returns. I think it was against Oregon, but uh, that was about it. You know, uh, I wasn't on special teams my my three years of college, but I was in every special teams meeting because I knew I was going to do that at the next level. Dave Burkett. Uh, just to stay with that for a sec, what, can you explain that a little bit more? You know, why you figured the special teams would be so important on this level and why, you know, what you learned from sitting in there, even if you weren't playing on that, those teams? Uh, that's something my coach, my position coach at Oregon State, uh, Michael Petrie, preached to the, to the whole running back room a lot. It's like the team is very important, and that's with any rookie. You're going to play special teams. No matter who you are, you're going to play special teams. So, you know, I took that, I soaked that in, you know, and I started to take notes reading and start coming at every meeting, even if I wasn't on special teams or even though I wasn't going to be on special teams. So uh, I really looked into that. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a big move. Um, you talked about, you know, thinking you might go undrafted and getting this call at the, at the very end of the round. I, is that a relief? Is it, you know, if you're undrafted, you get to pick where you go, you know, here you have the prestige of getting drafted. So how do you, how do you sort of, you know, look at the situation that you ended up in? Was there frustration at all? And uh, it was a little frustration. Um, I feel like, you know, I feel like I thought, I mean, I thought I was going to go earlier in the rounds, but obviously that didn't happen. But, you know, when it got to like fifth, sixth, I was just, you know, grateful for any team that picked so I wasn't really worried. It was, I mean, I was a little frustrated towards the end, but I'm just happy and blessed that I got picked. Yeah. Uh, and then last thing, I know we went to that other school, but uh, you get to run behind Panay Sewell now. Um, I don't yeah. know if you obviously saw him play. So what what will that be like for you? And, and what do you think of him as a player? Uh, that would be great. Uh, I think I only saw him play once, one year. Uh but I know he's a good player. You know, our coaches used to talk about him all the time, every time we played Oregon. So I know he's going to come in, you know, and do his job and um, do what the coaches tell him to do. So you know, it's, it's great to, uh, to have guys like that, the whole line that you can run behind. What'd your coaches say about him at Oregon State? Uh, he said he's a top tier guy, one of the best linemen in the Pac 12. Uh, just all, all great. Nothing, no, no negative things about him. It's all positive things about him. Yeah, for sure. All right, thank you. Congrats and welcome to Detroit. Appreciate it. All right, Carlos, last question. Yeah. Hey, Jamar, um, where did you uh, where did you think you were going to get drafted? I mean, I, I was seeing maybe third round, fourth round, fifth round. Where, where did you think you might go? How high? Um, I thought I was going to get drafted in like the third, fourth round, but uh, that didn't happen. But I'm just, you know, I'm cherishing the moment and. I'm happy and blessed that I got drafted. You know, like, uh, you know, LA kid, and and uh, I think he wanted to get recruited or go play for USC, UCLA. That didn't happen. Uh, he had to go up north, and, and we're obviously all Pac-12 uh, freshman of the year, all Pac-12, uh, you know, conference honors last year, 1,300 yards, you know, pretty high in the FBS, and rushing average what's what's the deal why are what are teams missing about why didn't they draft you what do you think exactly and that's that's what i don't i don't i don't understand but you know i'm glad the detroit lions gave me an opportunity because um i feel like it was nothing else i can do out there you know um i saw my long speed out there this past year i saw vision uh get the ball out of the backfield so i don't know where uh, i don't know what teams were uh missing or that i didn't have but um, you know, I felt like I was the best running back in the Pac-12, so. 
what how much uh, we talk about this all the time chip on the shoulder but how angry are you gonna run when you get on the field oh really angry um I haven't been in it I mean I've been in this position before you know uh, all my life I've been um uh, underrated uh went to a low tier college wasn't recruited by uh any good high schools or anything I went to a low tier college like I said before and uh again in the seventh round but hey I'm just I'm just show the world I'm shocked the world just just know every uh Detroit Lions getting everything out of me everything very good thank you all right Appreciate thank you Mar. thanks everybody thank you uh great to see everyone uh pretty cool to see you guys a little earlier before midnight um but um definitely um want to first off thank uh the entire organization um not not solely just the just the personnel department, the coaching staff, but 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 everyone from from top to bottom. Everybody had a hand in in what uh, our success was in this draft class. But definitely uh, with the personnel department, when everybody you know all, all of the scouts did extremely um, impressive job. You know uh, national scouts, air scouts, you know all the over the top guys, all the directors. Um, the entire coaching staff was extremely uh, helpful and, and, and willing and, and, you know, they, they got a lot of questions answered for us and things cleared up. So just couldn't couldn't be more happy with everybody uh, and how they contributed to to what we came away with. Um, you know, um, we're extremely happy. Uh, uh, we're very, very excited about all the guys that we were able to acquire. Um, I know that we've talked about quite a few of them already, but, you know, you know, starting with uh, Panay and just, you know, having a foundation and what we, you know, think is a building block, you know, in terms of year one of, of this regime and getting a, a, a guy that has such a monstrous upside uh, in terms of um, not just the talent, but also him being, you know, I guess technically the second youngest player in the draft. Um, I want to say, I want to say Kyle Pitts was born three days before him. Uh, that he would technically be the youngest player in the draft. So I guess Panay would be the second. But, you know, start with him and then, you know, even going down to Levi that we spoke with at, at, at length and, and Aleem and Iffy. Uh, but, you know, the guys that we were able to acquire today with with uh, Amon Ra St. Brown, uh, he was a guy that actually uh, first got um, exposure to last fall when I was still with the Rams and seeing him and it just seemed like he was such a uh, immediate fit of the characteristics that I think equate success, you know, to uh, a wide receiver and coming from the Rams, uh, you know, there was a lot of players at that position that are high floor players that are, uh, have high intangibles and I'm not comparing uh, St. Brown to those players, but I'm just saying from an intangible standpoint and what it takes to play the position, you know, he's instinctive, he's tough, he's got grit, he's savvy. Um, you know, there's usually I don't try to put too much uh, emphasis on blocking for a wide receiver. I just want to see if they're tough enough and, and willing to do it. But he's one of the most impressive blockers uh, that I saw in this draft class. And I just think uh, in that in that phase of the game, uh, the tenacity that he brings in that phase just says a lot about his intangibles and his football character. So a guy that's got savvy, knows how to run routes, has hands and makes plays uh, from, from inside and out. Uh, we're really excited about him. He was a guy that actually, you know, we strongly considered yesterday uh, to consider. But obviously, as we talked about this, the value um, where we had Efi was, was pretty high. But he was a guy that slept on overnight and uh, was really, really excited to be able to, to come off with. And, you know, we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of buy in and we were all hot on Barnes from Purdue. So wasn't sure if we were um, going to be able to still acquire him uh, back to 153. So uh, wanted to see if we could get ourselves in position to uh, make the trade to get both of them and we were able to do it and have success with, with the trade. So extremely happy. And, you know, Barnes is, you know, you're talking about elite a, elite character and intangibles. And you guys have heard me say thousands of times, you know, those are the players that we're, we're looking for. 
there's a base floor of talent that these guys are going to have. But I think Dan put it great the other night. Dan and I were talking was about, you know, we're we are getting not just talented football players, but we're getting football players that have talent. And so when we say football players, we're talking about guys that, yes, you like to watch them play. We love to watch them play the game, but they also have those necessary intangibles. So Barnes is one that definitely fits that fits that bill. And then, you know, to cap it off with Jamar Jefferson. And Jamar was actually one that, you know, early on in the process, I want to say the first week of meetings, you know, in February, really impressive of his such an instinctive runner. Uh, he has a natural feel to be a slippery inside player. He runs hard. Um, he just has a natural feel from a lot of uh, inside zone stuff, but he can do all phases, gap power stuff, inside zone stuff, but he's just a very smooth, uh, slippery, uh, instinctive runner who we're really excited about. So. Uh, couldn't be happier with everybody that we acquired. And um, I think it's a great start uh, year one of this regime to get some building blocks in place. And uh, I think it'll only go up from here. All right, first question, Mike O'Hara. Yeah, you talked about, excuse me, you talked about intangibles and character and all that. And today when we talked to him this morning, he talked about how hard it was to be out of football for a year. He opted out and he did it for a good reason too. I just wonder if he talked to you about that and how that struck you that how much it meant to him to get back into football and how much he missed not being able to play. Mike, I I, I didn't uh, I didn't hear who you who you mentioned the player. Hey. Who? Pene. I didn't I didn't hear you. Sue, Penny Sewell. Oh, yeah, okay, all right. Sorry. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, we 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 did have a uh, conversation uh, about that, and you know, it actually wasn't an easy decision for him to to opt mm -hmm. out. Uh, you know, Dan and I talked with him at, at length, and it actually wasn't even something that I, I think I've said it before in a, a, a previous press conference that I wasn't really because everybody had their different reasons um, that were uh, j justifiable for the most part. Um, I wasn't gonna um, punish anybody that that actually decided to opt out, but but Panay was awesome in terms of um, providing his reasoning for, for the opt-out. And, you know, there was a chance that he was actually not going to opt-out and play, you know, but there was other uh, stipulations that kind of came into play where it would kind of turn out best that he, he did not and went ahead and opted out. But uh, I will say that he's a guy that loves football and what his reasoning is and walking us through the process. Um, it, was, it was everything that we would have expected, but that was not an, an easy choice for him. And, you know, there was still, you know, a small window that he could have still played. Okay, great. Hey, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Corey Woods. Congra congratulations on your first draft. Um, Brad, I just wanted to talk to you about were there any players that um, you were shocked that were available to you? I know you said you were excited to land all the talent available, but was there one guy that you were just like, I cannot believe we landed him at this spot? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I will say even, you know, down to Jamar Jefferson, you know, I, I, even when we made the trade and, you know, got uh, 257, I believe it was, um, you know, would not uh, – I, I didn't really think that he would still be be on the board, so we were very, very happy about him. And, you know, I mentioned it last night, uh, or I guess I say technically this morning, about um, Iffy that, you know, uh, where we got him at at 101. Uh, didn't really expect him to be there, and so that's one that we were extremely happy about. Eric Woodyard. Hey, what's up, Brad? How you doing? Good. So to get through the first draft, man, I mean, like, does it does it feel like a monkey off your back a little bit? You talked about the preparation. You talk about studying previous drafts, just like getting through this and setting the, setting the tone. Like, you only get one chance to make a first impression. How are you feeling now that you got through it? Do you feel like you got everything you wanted? Just to take me through that process. Yeah, I, I I do. I don't. I don't. It's not a uh, monkey off of my back. Um, it, I would call it, so it's it's an accomplishment to to get through the first one, and and that that feels good, and feels even better to do it with great people, and think that we came away with you know some really good football players that we feel really really good about, and the entire organization is excited about. So it, that that's just a good feeling. Um, it'd be good. My mom shot, shot me a text this morning. I guess she saw me uh on the. Last last press conference she just said you got to make sure you get some sleep but um you know we could couldn't be happier with how it it, it came out um you know um I guess I should have wore a Pac-12 t-shirt to this uh to this presser but and that actually was not by attention by the way but shout out to the Pac-12 about 
having some good football players uh, for us to to acquire. But it feels great, you know. Um, you know, it's it, we we still have work to do. Those guys are currently working right right now in the undrafted free agency process. Um, so you know, we're, we're we're still at it. John Macaroon. Hey, Brad. Good evening. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. Um, as you move forward in your career. Um, I'm just wondering, how will you look back and define successful draft classes? You know, uh, there's a lot of different ways you probably could could break break that uh, success down. Um, you know, when, when you when you look back at it, um, I've often looked at just play time percentage, um, rather just like it's 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 more easier to see it as accolades. You know, if they were, you know, uh, they ended up being all pros or Pro Bowls and all that stuff. Stuff, but you know, um, it, it's 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 a it's a good barometer to see, you know, play time percentage, you know, games played, games started, and you know that can kind of that's probably usually a, a quick reference to break down success of pass drafts. And then one quick one I had, mm -hmm. um, I think I believe I came across a tidbit that you made some significant upgrades technologically to the draft room. Uh, can you confirm that? And how did that potentially help you in your first draft? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes, I did. And um, I, I thought that it was it was necessary for the process that I wanted to have in place. And uh, I couldn't be more thankful to uh, Sheila, the Ford family, Rod Wood, for um, supplying the resources and, and, and providing everything that, that we needed to make sure that we have everything to, to in order to have success. But it was extremely helpful. Um, you know, we're, we're living in a, a, a virtual world. And, um, you know, so just from a remote standpoint with, you know, the communication being streamlined through the use of technology and, you know, a, a lot of the other things, it definitely streamlined the meetings and it made the meetings a lot more uh, resourceful and vivid for sure and productive. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Brad. Hey, Brad. Um, so you follow mom's advice and get some rest? <laughs> I'll try to tonight. You know, I will say, you know, it was other times where I felt like I kind of got back, kind of back, got back to the bed around, you know, maybe 2 a.m. or so. But, you know, it was still that, that adrenaline was still rolling. So I still really didn't <laughs> get to sleep fully to about 3 a.m. But hopefully I can get in there uh, early tonight. But my mom always gives me the bags under my eyes test and she always kind of gives me hell for that. Right. So. <laughs> um, I got a couple of just housekeeping things. Um, mm -hmm. Undrafted free agents, I think you have like 18 roster spots if I counted it up right. Are you going to sign that many or what? what what's the number you're looking for there, I guess? You know, that's that's a that's a work in process. Um, that's a work in progress. We're going to uh, keep keep that fluid. You know, um, it does not have to be all done tonight. Uh, that's that's something that I've learned over the years. So, you know, you don't have to kind of, you know, hurry up and slide in the home plate and just kind of fill up everything. So we'll just, we'll just kind of make sure that we're we're providing it with quality and not just trying to rush the process right um you picked up frank ragno's op option before the draft which you know obvious to anyone i think that was going to happen but longer term how soon do you want to you know get started on signing him to a deal and, and how important is is that to make him a you know long-term piece of this thing too yeah i mean it's extremely important in terms of uh we already view, view him as a long-term piece and he is a found foundational piece because Frank is a guy that plays the game the right way. And, you know, he, he, he's, he's everything that we, that we look for and what we want as a line. And I'll never forget when, uh, when I first got, when it first got announced that I got the job, um, Frank, he reached out immediately. And, you know, I, I, I told him, I said, man, huge fan of you and you, you play the game the right way. So very important to, to get it done. Uh, I'm not going to comment on timetable uh, right now. That'd be a little bit premature, but we're not uh, sit, sitting back and waiting on that one. And then last thing, um, sort of ties in with what you were just asked, but I don't know, what's the, maybe the most important thing you accomplished this week? Like not necessarily a single pick, but you know, we talk about, you know, you getting big and finding these nasty demeanor players that are culture fits. Is there a, I don't know, a theme or something that stands out to you that, that you were able to do the last three days that you think will, you know, bode well for the future of, of this, this organization? Well, from the sounds of it, after we, after we uh, drafted St. Brown, I felt like people finally would get off my ass about not getting a receiver. So, um, but besides that, no, uh, 
it, it just we we just a, a, achieved the goal of just you know we we stuck to what to what we said that we were going to do, and that's just get good football players and, and 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 get the best football players that fit what we're we're looking for. And I believe that's what we set out to to do, and that's what we did it. So I, that's that's what we feel good about. And Dan and I were talking about is that. What we're preaching, those are the players that we are acquiring. And, you know, really, that that's really – it's not really something that we had to, you know, make – like look at a sheet and make sure we're following that. But that's what we truly believe, and I think that we achieved that. Fantasy football world, they love those receivers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so. Appreciate it. No problem. We'll do two more questions. Jeremy Reisman. Hey, Brad. Uh, again, congratulations on finishing your first draft. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you – you ended the the first two nights of the draft mentioning how you weren't anchoring yourself to need necessarily going with guys that you really like. I'm curious, is that a philosophy you hold for every draft or was that something that was more of a reflection of where the Lions roster was entering the draft? No, that's, that, that's just a core belief that I have, you know, um, you know, you just can never just, you know, you just don't, you don't, you don't pass on good players. That's just bottom line. Now I, I, I totally understand there's, there, there's certain positions like, I would say, you know, we feel pretty good about our 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 uh the the tackle position right now. So, you know, um I'm not sure if if there's another Panay that will be in the draft uh next year, but you know, it'd be hard pressed to say that, you know, we would immediately be looking for, you know, an an upgrade over the tackle position. So I get get all that, but at the end of the day, no, we just don't pass on good football players. So uh we we won't anchor ourselves going into anything. All right, last question, Justin Rogers. Brad, you definitely could have snuck in a nap there between the uh, fourth and seventh round. <laughs> yeah. um, I-, I wanted to come back to, to Derek Barnes for a second. Uh, seems like he's got kind of an old school skill set, but a, a modern uh, athletic, athletic traits. You know, he's, he's fast, he changes direction well. Um, I-, I know you don't set kind of where these guys are going to play. You're going to lean on the coaches, but you're not going to pick these guys without talking to to Aaron and Mark. So what kind of fit do you see for him in, in your scheme? Yeah, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because all these players that we felt, you know, they fit, they, they do fit the new age modern era of where the game is going. You know, um, even, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start even like, well, we'll stick on Barnes, you know, Barnes, he's so intriguing because yes, he might have that, approach and demeanor of like you say kind of the older school linebacker but that dude is fast he's explosive he can really run he's got long arms he can he can shed blocks he plays with tenacity he has a background as a pass rusher so he's got the versatility to do a lot of different things and I think that that's needed in today's game you know you look at a a Lee McNeil you know he's not just your, your traditional space block eating space eater like yes he can do that but he's athletic he's got quickness he can change directions like he is he he, he does fit that mold that you kind of need in, in today's game you know like an Efi, he may look like just a press corner but no he can play in space he can change directions he's got twitch he's got short air movement so we do think that all of these players that we selected you know we are making sure that we're keeping up with how the game is, is evolving. But Barnes, for, for sure, we just love that he just has elite intangibles, elite character, as you guys probably found, found out, you know, just chatting with him. But we just love his versatility and everything he does. And he's another guy that just plays the game the right way. And I guess you've been in this room, uh, the draft room, for years. And, you know, you had months to prepare for this one. I think we're always growing as people. So I'm curious, as you reflect in the immediate here, what, what do you think you learned uh, from from this weekend being in the in the big chair for the first time? No, yeah, that's a good, that's a really good question. Um, I will say, just for com- coming fresh off of it, um, you know, I think I think I learned that you really have to trust. Well, first of all, have surround yourself with great people, and you have to trust them. And you know, um, coming up as a uh, as a scout, then a college director, you're often tasked to do things, you know, uh, by yourself or for yourself and have to do a lot of things and make sure that it's right. But, you know, uh, in, in, in this chair, you don't you don't have you don't have the time to to really do every single thing you want to. So you got to make sure that you're on the same page and uh, really trust the great people that you have surrounded 
yourself with. And I believe that, that that's what we did, you know, in our personnel department. And I think those guys did a heck of a job with delivering the uh, results that we, that we wanted. So hats off to, to them. Without them, uh, we would not have had the success that we've had. Thanks again for all your time this weekend, Brad. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, everybody. All right, guys. Thank thanks, you. Brad.